Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and in this worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Standing, raise her voice on the heights beside the way at the crossroads she takes her stand beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portals she cries out to you O people I call and my cry is to all that live the Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts of long ago ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth when there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when we had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When, we when he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 8. Let us read it responsibly by a whole verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is raised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him a little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Our second lesson is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. <clears throat> Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will speak not on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that I will, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. <laughs> Do the thing. Sorry. <laughs> Words mean, but in our hearts, 
we know what a farewell discourse is. Those are the final words of meaning and love and wisdom. And in Jesus' case, final words of promise. These are the words that you use to say goodbye well. The final opportunity to say what life is really about and how the departing person, the dying person, wants those who remain alive, how they want them to live. These are not your deathbed, like last breath kind of words. These are the last words of someone who knows the end is coming and still has something to say about it. And so that's what we're walking into today when we head up the stairs to that upper room where Jesus and his disciples are. And Jesus has amazing, iconic, heart-wrenching words for us before he's killed. Words that have become central to our faith. Words like, in my father's house, there are many rooms, and I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus says he will never leave us orphaned. It's here Jesus says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. It's here that Jesus talks about himself as the true vine and his followers as the branches. And Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, those words that we heard today. And the Greek word for Holy Spirit is paraclete, a paraclete. And sometimes some Bibles translate this word as an advocate. We all need one of those occasionally. Some Bibles have it translated as a companion, and others say helper. And so we know a little bit about what this Holy Spirit does by what this Holy Spirit is called. The advocate, the companion, the helper, the paraclete. This old Greek word kind of captures all of these terms, but the way I remember it is, is the Holy Spirit is the part of God that puts on a pair of cleats and gets in the game with us. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes alongside and like a sheepdog drives us towards God's will for our lives and towards God's will for the whole world. And that's who Jesus is talking about in this farewell about this spirit that is coming next to guide his disciples. He wants his disciples to know they will not be left alone. And this Holy Spirit that's coming creates a lot of questions. A few years ago, I was teaching a faith formation class about worship to the children in my church. And after the lessons and the craft and the song, I did that stupid thing that pastors always do. I said, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> yeah. And one little boy raised his hand and he said, Pastor Amy, do you have any secrets? <laughs> and I said, well, do you mean about like, worship or church stuff or what the shelf behind an altar holds? You know, what kind of secrets are you looking for? And he says, no, just any kind of secrets. And I said, oh, no. Not that I can tell you today, honey. I don't have those kinds of secrets. <laughs> and I thought, though, that's like a really good question that we ask as a part of our faith. Do you have any secrets? It's a thousand-year-old question that we ask God. Humans have stared at the sky for millennia and asked, that, asked God that same question. We even talk about it when we open worship to the God from whom none of our secrets are ever hidden. And so we ask God. Do you have any secrets? What does this all really mean? What do you really mean when you talk about this? Are you holding out on me? And that was the big question floating around that night for the disciples. As Jesus kept saying all this confusing stuff, Thomas says, Lord, we do not know the way to where you're going. How can we find you? Philip asks, will you show us the Father? And they were really asking, do you have any secrets? Do you have any secrets? And the disciples keep asking Jesus, what does this mean over and over? They were really asking, do you have any secrets? Are you holding out on us, Jesus? And the answer is yes. Yes, I am, but not forever. Jesus says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. That's my least favorite sentence in this whole passage. It's intense. If we expected Jesus to lay all his cards out on the table, 
to be transparent, to really let us in on this special plan, we're rudely awakened. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But the more I think about it, maybe that sentence makes really good sense for Trinity Sunday, this day where we celebrate our three in one God. Because the Trinity, as a church doctor, is our very best attempt to capture something we are never going to totally capture. It's our explanation of a God who cannot be explained. Overall, it's kind of our best attempt to smell the color nine. And that's really what church doctrines are simply our best efforts simply our best efforts because faith isn't something to be explained faith is something to be lived faith is something to be shared more than it is something to be put in a book and make sure it's written down correctly that's the thing about our living god it means we have a living faith that grows and changes as god works on us and makes us more in the image of who we're supposed to be and so we hold all of these heavy church doctrines in one hand, like the Trinity, this elusive explanation of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And in the other hand, we hold these living promises of Jesus that breathes life into our theology textbooks. These living promises of Jesus that shake out our well-reasoned answers with bursts of divine power. We have the assurance that Jesus gives us that the Holy Spirit is coming. Jesus has many things to say to his disciples, and many things to say to us now. And that same spirit of truth that came way back then is the same spirit of truth that's going to come for all of us. The Holy Spirit showed up back then, and the Holy Spirit will show up right now. We find that we get to know who God is by how God acts. And no matter how many good explanations of the Trinity we hear, or how many good theology textbooks we read, or how many amazing podcasts we hear, we get to know the Trinity by how the Trinity acts. And we see that the Trinity acts as one. We see that the Trinity guides us in truth. That the Trinity proclaims to us the promised hope that is coming. That the Trinity glorifies the God who gave us life, the Christ who saves us, and the Holy Spirit who makes each and every one of us into brand new people. So perhaps, perhaps this Bible story isn't so stingy for Trinity Sunday after all. Perhaps there's still many things for Jesus to say, and may we become listeners. Amen. Amen. Please rise if you are able. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not day. Of the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and then to the main man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers for the people, form three, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 385, or within your order of worship. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda and Brian, our bishops, Rochelle, our priest, Kim, our deacon, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for those who govern, especially Joe, our president, Kay, our governor, Joe and Sherman, our mayors, and all who hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, our companion diocese of the Virgin Islands and their bishop, Scott Trinity, Alpine, excuse me, Trinity Alpine, Holy Trinity, Auburn Trinity, Vesper Trinity, Planting Trinity, Demopolis Trinity, Trinity Florence, and Trinity Rotunda. Let us also pray, pray for the people of Ukraine, victims of gun violence, Jacob and Stella Blackwood, Megan Hayden, Bill Gandy, Billy Bishop, Judy Robertson, and Jonathan Huffstead. Let us also pray for our own needs and those of others. Thank you. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank, you. Uh, thank you once again for having me here. It's, I get to do the fun part for the first time in my ministry, so I love coming to different churches. Are there any announcements for the good of the congregation? Oh, thank you. All right. Then we continue our worship as we collect our gifts to God. Oh 
intimate love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer these your gifts, sanctified them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you who are graciously accepted us as the living members of the Son of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, Almighty Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.